All right, well, on the line we have uh, the president of the Manitoba Métis Federation, David Chartrand. Hey, Dave, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm not doing well, my friend. I'm sick today. Oh, no. I'm sick for two days now, and I think it's a uh, regular flu. Uh, I got my AstraZeneca on, uh, or my shot on Saturday, so but I got uh, started getting sick yesterday and cold style. I got no fever, nothing, but I have aches and, and uh and they uh, had chills there on Friday, uh, Saturday night, I guess. Oh, uh, what's no. today? Saturday and Friday night. Oh, no. And uh, to cover up with two blankets. So I had no fever or nothing. And mm. uh, so it, uh, I could smell everything, so it can't be COVID. Plus, I got my shot. I got tested before. I was negative. Oh, okay. so I must got a regular flu somewhere. But I got to worry because I had pneumonia about three times, so I got to always watch. Oh, yes, for if sure. If I get that, I can... Never know which way your world will become, <laughs> which yeah. way, which road you take. So I got to be so careful. But anyways, I think Jack Park actually come dropped off some goodies for me today and uh, from the bakery and uh, wishing me to get healthy soon. And uh, I'll crawl back to bed as soon as I finish this particular interview. But let's do what I hear is happening tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh-huh. 6 o'clock. <laughs> I understand you ate some honey already. Uh, if not, you better go get some honey, get those vocal cords all softened up and ready to vibrate the arena. Well, thank you. They did change a couple of the words there uh, lately. Uh-huh. So I had to learn, relearn a little bit of them. And I'm hoping I got them all. Oh, good. I keep saying our home in Métis land. They said, no, it's native land. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, excuse me. It was a mistake. Let's just, uh, we'll fix it up next round. You know, next time I sing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm sure a lot of us will be watching you all. I already told Gloria, I don't care if I'm asleep or I'm not dead. You'll wake me up. That I want to watch that. I said, so, so I want to make sure I'm watching it. And it's having, of course, a sense of pride watching one, one of our legends Aww. singing. And I, I know you'll carry that old Canada a long way and then probably shatter some, some glass while you're at it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I look forward to it anyway. Uh, I know you'll do us proud. Thank you. Okay, let's go with some business now. Yeah. <laughs> I got... Uh, First of all, the budget. The budget was very good for, for all Indigenous people in the Métis Nation, especially for us, uh, because we're playing catch-up, really, on, on any kind of funding. And there was a lot of new uh, funding available for women, mental health. Uh, and, and you look at businesses, you look at education, uh, try to tap child, child care, uh, infrastructure, uh, just on and on and on, chunks everywhere. Uh, it comes up to about $18 billion that we have to share ourselves, First Nation and Inuit, but the Métis will get a nice proportion from there. And now our job is to make sure we go after it and, and put in perspective some of the things we, our people have tools for priorities. Uh, some of the things we're working on right now is, for example, we want to open a um, rehabilitation uh, drug program um, and facility. We have the facilities now. I just got to get the program in operation. And uh, we're looking, the Métis women, uh, Cindy women are looking for a shelter program. And and then we're looking for Ronald McDonald House. Where we think we bought the land already, and I think it's it's closing. If not, uh, first let me say hi to Dustin and Zach. They're working at the Federation. Two young guys. We are at the Federation. Two Métis guys are little workaholics. Uh, weekends are nothing for them to work. And uh, I hope they don't fall in love because they work like crazy, and I don't want them to lose their work ethic. <laughs> <laughs> they find a girlfriend, they'll probably never see them again. No. Anyways, but uh, right now they work uh, seven days a week practically, so they're doing an excellent job. But Dustin's working on the finalization of the land uh, on Notre Dame, and if that works out, that's where we're going to build a Ronald McDonald House, right? And uh, wow. so are people coming in to see doctors, uh, hospital, and, you know, we know our families are so close. Uh, I have a tough time finding a place to stay and mm-hmm. something that would probably accommodate them uh, to make them feel at home. So that's what we're working on that. So so there's a lot of there's a lot of green opportunity for businesses here, so people listening at home. Uh, there's businesses, all kind, all kind of uh, format of businesses that are coming up. I know some of the things that Francis, uh, as the vice president of the region, and uh, Lee Laplante, uh, others around my cabin are talking about, uh, trying to go back into some of the, the old met- methods of business. And because it doesn't have to be a booming million dollar business as long as you can get uh, a business chain moving. So I know, for example, we've been uh, working on uh, some areas already, uh, revi- revitalizing the maple sugar. You know, we used to be big on that one time. Mm-hmm. And so we're looking, some places are doing it. I know in uh, Francis' the region, they're actually doing that quite a bit in the, around the Kinnesota, Manitoba House area. Uh, so they're, they're doing the uh, maple syrup. Will's father uh, is, what, 90 years old already practically. He still does it. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of him. He goes out there and it's a lot of work. Uh, but uh, at the end, Bobby bought me some. It was, oh, it tasted so 
supposed to be Dr. Bobby Church. Uh, her sister has a, lives in a 40 acre uh, land and she has a lot of maple trees. So he's going to actually make it bigger next year. He just did, he was just testing it this year. And he likes to go do it a cultural ways and tradition. That's one of the things we're looking at building a stronger uh, connection back to the land. People are telling us that connecting back to the resources. And we need to put, but if we're going to do that, we might as well do it from a business context. Like I know wild rice has been trying to sell for some time. Is there a way we can really help market that process, right? There's a Métis company out of Saskatchewan that does it way up north. And, uh, but uh, we need to find ways. How do, we, how do you market your commodity? That's why I've been doing a lot of work with Colombia and other countries to see if I can take their product, bring it in, and we can exchange products maybe and looking at how we move forward. But clearly, uh, there's got to be a way we can venture into looking at some of our, our traditional ways and, and, and going back to the lands. And a lot of people really want to go back and begin to understand. In fact, it reminds me of an article I read in CBC, uh, Chief Kent, uh, Treaty 5, is, is definitely uh, raising some strong issues <coughs> regarding... Uh, Premier Pallister's, uh Bill 57, where he's trying to prevent people from protesting and so forth if, if they open mines and they go around and uh, develop without consultations. And, of course, the province says, oh, we have great consultations. We drive by your community once in a while. We throw some flyers out in the air, and you'll get lucky and catch one. You can read it so we consult it with you. That's the best way to describe their, their gold standard of consultation. They'll send an email out or a call, a phone call, it's so sad, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But they'll lose in court. Trust me, they will not yeah. be able to stand strong in court. Uh, sooner or later, these things will get to the courtrooms. And uh, a good example, if you look at the this Altal case, and that's an important one. If you look at there's two cases that just came out for people to hear back here in Manitoba. And first is the, uh, I won't say all the names of the First Nations, because uh, I, I might not pronounce them right, but there's five First Nations uh, that just won the Court of Appeal in British Columbia regarding the right for commercial fishing. Now, that's a massive one. Remember, I've been talking on it in the show before. We mm-hmm. were looking at trying to build a case on commercial fishing, mm-hmm. uh, commercial product, per period, because we have definitely uh, a strong uh, evidentiary uh, history of exchanging uh, commodities with Americans and other parts of, uh, of Canada, Western Canada, So from and trade with the fur, in fact. So when you look at it from that concept commercial right is a very important now for people that are asking what's the difference so there's a big difference like if you go hunting uh, and set up a net for fishing but you're going to eat it it's called sustenance your right to sustenance they they can't charge you with that but they've been mm-hmm. threatening to charge first nation and metis and anyway if they go out and take a product without provincial license go out and take a product and then sell it without their permission now that's the battle that happened in 1816 uh, the Pemmican Proclamation in 1814 that said to our people, you can't trade Pemmican with our permission. And our people said, no, who the hell, who the hell are you? Mm-hmm. This is what we've done, and we're going to continue to do so. So the battle actually, uh, two years later in 1816, ensued into a battle, and we won. So, but it, again, this is a point where the people who believe they have the power, either because they're a majority uh, or because they believe they inherit it based on their, their governance, that they have the right to tell us, as as children of the government that they we can and cannot do what you know so this case actually carries a lot so if you set a net uh, or you go hunting and you're if you're uh doing it for food to eat for family they 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 can't charge you Mm -hmm. but on commercial they were but this case now sets a new precedent in this country that you can actually set nets and sell your own fish and you will not not need a provincial license so this is uh, something we'll be examining very strongly with our lawyers at the Federation and preparing ourselves uh, to help our people on a commercial trade, commercial development, commercial businesses that can be evolved. And imagine if we have the freedom and the powers to do that, we can do international trade. Mm-hmm. We can take our products and trade them anywhere in, 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 the, in the world. Uh, so we would not need the Palliser to tell us, yes, you can or not, you can't. Uh, so, so that's a big case that came out of uh, British Columbia. Another one, of course, that just came out of the British Columbia but this is a Supreme Court decision. It's called Disatol. Disatol is a First Nation American uh, who comes uh, from uh, B.C., but uh, lived in the United States uh, most of his life, uh, and I think maybe all of his life. But he's connected to, uh, to the tribe in, uh, in, in the, the band. It's not a band because they never signed treaties in B.C., but he lived in the United States in and the particular district of territory all the way down to Washington uh, is partly connected to their territory is what they uh, take a strong position on. And in, see, in seeing that, the, uh, 
uh, he shot an elk and he got charged uh, for hunting without the light, uh, not being a Canadian and hunting in, in Manitoba in Canton, BC. But it, it, clearly, at the end, it was it was uh, he, they lost. The government lost. The Supreme Court of Canada ruled this hotel just because he moved doesn't mean he loses rights, uh, and that the inherent right still exists. Mm-hmm. So, so from that context, you can't. Uh, and that's the position we take right now. That's why we work so hard to protect our Métis Nation identity. So nobody can steal it from us. But if we move somewhere else, uh, we still have the right to come home and utilize our rights here in our territory. So, so that's those are important aspects. That's a big case that came down. We took intervener, MMF and MNC. That means we stepped in and supported the case at the Supreme Court of Canada. You know the sad part, Ray? We couldn't get support from Sus- Métis Saskatchewan and Métis of Alberta and Métis of Ontario. What? Uh, they wouldn't support us uh, in fighting on, in partnership with this at all to support us on mobility rights. Because mm-hmm. you look, we have, uh, no question, already won in Manitoba. But you look at Saskatchewan, they, every case they win, and then they won every case, they only let them go a few hundred yards at a time. So they tell them you can hunt, uh, not but not past this little location. You can hunt within a 100-kilometer, 20-kilometer area, like which is crazy. So, But uh, it, it just makes shows you how far behind they are in the ruling in Saskatchewan. But this will really scare the... The province, I guess, to see, wow, okay, we, we have a new case in the Supreme Court of Canada that's going to give uh, Métis First Nation Inuit uh, a very new perspective in law. So from our side, uh, I'm very proud as a Métis government. Uh, we see far ahead, and we look at things that will protect our people into the future. And this will help, of course, people living in Saskatchewan now. And Alberta, even though they didn't support it, uh, and they instead they're busy fighting with us on, on Ontario. So in fact, they're taking us to court. Uh, Ontario is taking the Métis Nation uh, to court and the Métis Federation, uh, saying that they have a right to bring those people in and that we're nothing but a corporation, uh, meaning MNC is nothing. But a corporation has no uh, purpose really beyond setting up meetings and and that the, uh, the Assembly has no mandate, has no authority. It's unbelievable. I've never seen that. Like, this is mm-hmm. this is a new... They did it before. Audrey Potter did it in... in uh, and uh, Alberta, when she got rid of uh, uh, Trevor Gladue and Rick Boucher and all them, who ran against her, so she, they got banned for five years. And they took it to court, and she argued it's a private club. And it's, we're not a government, we're a club. We can do, choose who belongs to our club. And that was the argument made by Patra, President mm-hmm. Patra. The same argument was made by President Fro just a few a couple years ago on, on uh, an individual taking her to court saying he has a right to membership. And she said, we're a voluntary club. We can decide who belongs to a club. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and yet they run around saying they got self-government, like, and they call themselves clubs. You know, so mm-hmm. it, it just shows you, again, how far away they are from recognizing these important aspects. When you go to court and you fight for a stand, these are the things you need to stand on because you've got to stand on your nationhood and stand on who you are. So I give kudos to this adult and uh, also to the five uh, uh, different nations in, in uh, British Columbia who just won the commercial hunting, uh, harvesting, commercial right to, uh, harvesting in, in British Columbia. So they'll be able to set nets and, and sell their fish. They don't need a uh, commercial fishing license from the province. They can go and do their own, set their own regimes, set up their own laws, and, and organize their, their own processes and, and definitely look at an economic engine for their people. So, again, uh, as I said, these are important aspects that are, are rolling out everywhere, and, and we're winning more and more of these cases at the, at, the, at the Supreme Court of Canada, and it just helps us so much more in doing so. Now, on other matters, uh, I, had a, I also spoke to Bennett Miller about the budget, and I made it very clear, as long as it stays nation to nation, government to government, we, we feel that it's a damn good budget. Mm-hmm. However, if you change the direction and all of a sudden bureaucrats tell us what we can and cannot do, then we're back to score one where we lost all our footing. So they assured us that's not what's going to happen, and we'll make sure that we'll see what happens. I also spoke to Minister Wilkinson. He's a minister, of course, of environment and green plans, mm-hmm. and I advised him of our, our ongoing strategy to build uh, greenhouses. And But I also talked about the boreal forest. There's a great opportunity for us to help out and clean the boreal forest and making it into a tourism opportunity, and uh, so he and I are going to continue working on an initiative. He likes it. Uh, so we're going to talk about how we do that. So we'll create a lot of jobs. And, of course, the boreal forest is the biggest in Manitoba and Saskatchewan and definitely will have a big impact. So uh, I look forward to that ongoing discussion with Minister Wilkinson. I also spoke to the provincial government, Minister Friesen, uh, wanted a meeting with myself, and uh, 
We talked about the IIU, of course, investigating units, and I indicated to him that uh, in order for it to be trustworthy, you've got to put Indigenous people on there, you've got to put Métis and First Nation on there uh, to make sure that they can trust this. And uh, there's a lot of experienced people in our fields, and uh, clearly at the end of the day, uh, it's not rocket science, it's, uh, and if, if there's a need for expertise, then that's what you, you go out and get. But however, for having an uh, investigating unit, you need to make sure there's Indigenous people on there so you can have trust established to it. So we, we agreed to move on, on this agenda. He indicated we should meet uh, every, every three months together, but he wanted to set up a committee. So I agreed to that, so we'll see what happens on that. Uh, this is strange to me. I told uh, the ministers I've never had, remember I told you on the show many times, I've never had meetings, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't want to meet with me. So right. all of a sudden i got meetings coming out of my ears now. <laughs> uh, i got a meeting also with Cox and, and uh, Clark, and we had a good discussion, and uh, uh, we talked about the museum, uh, and, and the Heritage Center, I'll call it, they call it museums, the Heritage Center we're building, and uh, she indicated what, what they possibly can do. I said, well, obviously I don't want to bother wasting my time applying, which I've, I've written to you to support it. You supported the Inuit uh, Gallery. You supported the uh, Royal uh, Canadian Air Force Museum with $10 million. Uh, you supported the uh, Inuit one. Uh, you supported different museums. So I don't see why you wouldn't support the founders of Manitoba, the Métis Nation, and our, 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 our heritage center. So uh, and they said, well, you know, if you get to write in and apply, I said, well, you know, I'm not going to waste my time. Trust me. I'll get a letter back saying you've got no funds. If you guys are serious, uh, if your government is serious, then you go carry this thing into, into, your, into your cabinet and say, we have to support this. And if not, I'm building without you anyway. Mm-hmm. So, but there's no way you're going to put me through this um, process and then tell me later, well, we gave, they didn't qualify. Well, and waste me months and months and months, you know. Or what they said, well, we have 25000 it's available. Well, this thing is $15 million. So this building and the Heritage Center uh, that's going to be inside there is going to be one of a kind in the world. And so I said, uh, you know, if you're going to put twenty five thousand dollars, there's going to you're going to be that's the doorknobs probably we're going to be able to afford to use with uh, to do that. But <laughs> but clearly I, I indicated. Look, and so Kathy Cox took the challenge. She said, I will champion this for you, and I'll move it. Down, I'll move it into ca- cabinet and move it to other ministers to see if we can find money. And if you do, I said, then let's talk. Uh, but don't send me down a rabbit hole where I can never get out uh, or find my way through it and get any kind of no funding at the end of the day. I said, and then, but say that you were trying to help me. So I don't want to get caught in that, I said. So then we'll see what happens with that. I'll keep people posted. I did have a very good meeting with the president, uh, Romana Valeshi, from uh, Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark, she's working on this file for us, and she, of course, does a, a superb job always. Uh, but this, of course, uh, they're talking about nuclear hubs. Uh, they're talking, and you heard Pallister supporting it here in Manitoba. I said I found it quite surprising he is because we got such big hydro, uh, but I, I know there's some northern areas where diesel is still being used, and I think this is when they're talking about a nuclear hub to go inside there. So uh, I said to uh, the president, uh, Valishi, I said, look, when you use the word nuclear, you scare people because uh, they, they, they know uh, what happened in Russia, they know what happened in different parts of, of the world, and they see different contamination of what nuclear powers can do. And so people get afraid of that stuff. They need to be educated and they need to be understanding uh, how efficient this system is and how, how guaranteed proof it is uh, before they can have faith in it. So it's going to take some work, I said, but we're definitely willing to sit down with them and talk to them about uh, how nuclear hubs can actually uh, roll itself out in, in, uh, in Western Canada. Uh, but they are talking, of course, uh, nuclear hubs in Western Canada right now. Oh. I also did an interview at CKDM, and I was very proud to talk about the investments in Dauphin right now and we're putting in. Of course, we have a daycare center, a very big daycare center, 50 kids. Um, and we're also uh, uh, building of offices, uh, all different sectors of services will be there. Then there's a, there's a pharmacy, there's a gymnasium, there's other things that will be inside there. It'll be the tallest building on Main Street in Dauphin. So, so that's something that, uh, again, will send a message loud and clear. The Métis are, are, are really economic players in, in, in the context. And Swan River, I think, is the next project we're looking at in that particular area uh, for investment. And, uh, but, again, we're doing it all different sectorial fields. And, uh, but, again, I, I just know from the context it's going to create a lot of jobs. And it's already creating jobs just to get the buildings in place. But, actually, uh, uh, Francis believes they'll hire probably 75 to 100 full-time people there. 
So that's a big turnaround of events for people to get jobs. And we already have our, our uh, students in training right now for child care certificates. So we want another class to be going. We have our LPN courses on, on the move right now, and I can't wait for, the, for them to graduate. And uh, so that, again, will, will create a numerous opportunity for jobs. So with, Ray, with that being said, I'm probably going to say goodbye now. I'm getting a little tired. And uh, I'm going to go crawl into my bed and let the rest take care of me and, uh, and uh, see what happens in the next few days. And I'm sure it's as long as I, I was getting, I was better, worse off yesterday, so I'm a little bit better today. So I'm sure I'll be even more better tomorrow. Oh, I hope so, Dave, for sure. Yeah, I, but I wouldn't miss you tonight, I'll tell you that. I, no matter, come hell or high water, I'll... Even I have to put uh, close pins on my eyes to keep them open. I'll watch you at 6 o'clock. Are you singing right in the arena? Yes, right in the arena. There's oh, no... you better put your vocal cords right to prime, boy. <laughs> I want to hear that old Canada going, oh, can <laughs> Don't do it like Tom, uh, what's his name, uh, Tom Jackson. Oh, can nah. Don't do that. You single Canada with a, with a, with a different, with the way we know it, you know. But, but with your voice, it's going to carry a lot of power. And uh, so I, I look forward to it. And uh, I'm, I'll be proud as a friend and uh, one that sees you as a role model to be watching you. So uh, I just look forward to it. And Cowboys even look, I think Cowboys more excited than I am. So, uh, so again, we'll be all looking at it. I know Gloria's been texting everybody that, to watch it tonight, and uh, uh, Sugar, my niece, them are all uh, telling everybody, oh, Ray's on tonight. So uh, uh, Kevin Chief, of course, was giving me updates on this, and Kevin, of course, is dying, working with uh, Mark, and uh, part the owner of the Jets, and uh, he's uh, one of the owners. Um, but uh, Kevin now uh, has been working diligently with them on bringing an indigenous segment to the Jets uh, uh, and franchise, and he's doing an excellent job. So thank you, Kevin, for all the work you do in that field, and uh, I wish, again, all, all the people, well, and I wish the Jets win tonight after hearing such a proud voice coming out of there. So a legend to be singing in that arena. Uh-huh. So, again, my friend, you take it easy. And to all our listeners out there, I want to say again, thank you. I'll close off now, of course, with some condolences I have to uh, give. Uh, this is the part, of course, uh, Ray, the next gospel tune. Elder George Lavalley and Jessica Casey. Jessica works in my office, works in the president's office, lost her mother, Rosemary Descharmes, on Tuesday, April 20th. I was supposed to try to go to the... Uh, um, to the viewing last night, but I was too sick. I couldn't. Oh, just, yes, for sure. There's no way I could take a chance. I was, mm-hmm. I was already breaking down. I was scared to get pneumonia the way I was feeling, so I was getting chills. So I did, but I. But they've asked me to do the eulogy at a different time when the funeral will take place. Mm-hmm. So again, Jessica, she works in my office and very close to me at my office. So again, the, and our elder George, I had a chat with him, and I plan to go visit him once uh, COVID kind of laps itself out here and go have some coffee with him and tea or visit him at home. I remember Rosemary cooked me a nice duck soup, and I went to see her and, uh, and George and Bannock and some made me. She, she made, she knows, I guess, some of you I like day cake. She made me day cake. Oh, so that spoiled me rotten when I was there visiting her. So, again, I'm so sad to hear her go. And uh, I told Jessica, I really like, do like I have always done with my mom has taught me. Talk to her every day and every night, and she's still going to be listening to you. So, mm-hmm. again, uh, to all of uh, the family, the Charm family, and, and, of course, to George and his family, and, and um, of course, Amanda and Jessica are like sisters. Uh, so again, I want to express my uh, personal condolences from me and my wife uh, to Jessica and her family and to George uh, from uh, to, for the loss of uh, such a beautiful woman, Rosemary. Now, next one is we have one of our uh, vice presidents, his husband, six, Gary. Gary Fike is back in hospital again, and he's been fighting back and forth his medical issues. And uh, so, if you can send prayers to Jalida, uh, Jalida is also going through some personal challenges with cancer. So. Uh, we're hoping everything's going to turn out okay, uh, but this family's going through some hard times, and uh, so if you can send prayers their way, I'd uh, really appreciate it as the president and as the Métis Nation. We always do that. We help each other. We care for each other. So send prayers for Gary Fike to get healthy fast, to go home and, and work and, and help his wife while she tries to battle with other pressures on, when it comes to cancer and so forth. On birthdays, we've got happy 61st birthday to Ronald Sanders and a regular listener on the show, and uh, that's John Sanderson's dad from Scoundrel. And Scoundrel got hit, Ray, I don't know if you read about it in the news. They got hit with COVID. It's moving pretty quickly in there. I know Cameron kept that thing out as uh, the chief for a long time, but it mm-hmm. found, found its way back into the reserve, and they're gone into lockdown right now. There's a lot of uh, people uh, that are consequentially being affected and uh, families. Uh, my, my daughter is very concerned because my grandson's over there right now, no. and uh, so he can't come until he gets checked because baby Ron... Uh, can't have and can never contact COVID because he probably never make it because he lives through and eats through a tube and and has, has many many illnesses and 
and the, so no way can COVID ever enter that house. So we've got to wait till I say it gets clear so his dad wants to go pick him up and bring him home and take him out of there before. Uh, he's locked up right now. He's being safe, which is good. But again, you never know what's going to happen. Eh? So also happy birthday to Bobby Church, his 60th birthday. And then Bobby, you've seen him on the videos. You'll see him on the Pemmican videos every morning on CTV. Mm-hmm. If you don't if you don't miss it, watch CTV News Winnipeg every morning. No, I see uh, it, yeah. You see it there? Did you mm-hmm. see him there? Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. They're making the Pemmican there, uh, him and his son. Yep. <laughs> and actually, he made some... He bought me some uh, moose meat and that. And I want to think, uh, actually, I met to Cecil Torn. Cecil Torn has a court case regarding, it's not a commercial case, but it's about commercial rights. Uh, and uh, he has a case going right now. And he bought me some fish and, and he bought me some moose meat. So I, I told my wife and she said, I feel so rich now. Got all this wild meat. And, and uh, as soon as I get better, I tell you, I'll be at that table. <laughs> with bannock and gravy and mashed potatoes yeah. and moose meat. So anyways, I'll uh, talk to you guys next Saturday. And uh, to all those I, I missed regarding... Anybody that passed, my uh, personal condolences to you and your family and to all the young people out there. Keep on being proud. Be safe. Keep your family safe. Be the leaders we expect you to be and protect your grandparents and your parents. And to all of our elders, you take care and keep on the wisdom and always give me the guidance and the blessing and thank you for all your prayers. So talk to you guys next Saturday. All right, David. Get better now. Take it easy. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye now. Bye. All right, David Chartrand, the president of the Manitoba Métis Federation, his weekly report, Métis Matters, and... I know we're all hoping that he gets better because he's he sure needed. I'll tell you that he guy who works as hard. Oh, yeah, he sure is needed. You got that right. Yeah, he for does sure. Work very hard. 